Hello and welcome to the Animus Prime channel. My name is Robin Sachs and I will show you this time the basics of building a config file for cable modems. So we head over to our demo system at demo.animusprime.com and log in with the login credentials customer and the password customer. And uh, we open up our provisioning and config files. And in our last video, I already showed you how to use this tree and why it is a tree view. And if you open up BaseCM, you can see the list of vendors and modems, which are mostly just empty. For example, if I use an Aris and then I go here, <coughs> you will see nothing in this. Um, some of them also contain a certificate, for example, the uh, Thomson, which has this. And uh, these are actually the contents of the firmware file located here. Uh, this is because as we started building the system, we put the certificate data for installing the firmware into this text area. But nowadays we prefer to upload a certificate file because this stuff hasn't much to do with the actual configuration. So we go back to here. Uh, what is interesting for us is the content of the base CM <coughs> or CM base, which represents the basic configuration used for all vendors and modems you can see in this whole tree view. Because I like this configuration a little bit colored, I'm going to copy it into my uh, editor of choice with some nice color scheme. So welcome to my favorite editor of choice. This is Gedit and the color scheme I'm using is called Boo. And here you can see our CM base config file. And I will cover the first part and uh, later the second part, which is not that important for this video. I'm going specifically because it was requested for these points. So first we start with the US service flow, which means upstream service flow and define US service flow reference. This is um, the reference number, which is later used for package classifiers. Um, we don't use package classifiers. And they are not needed for now, but I can still show you one if you like. This is what an uh, upstream package class would look like. So here we have the service flow reference number so that the system knows we are going for the uh, flow reference here. And then you have some classifier reference number, rule priorities, uh, activation state is one because it's activated and you can uh, insert some net masks and uh, which protocol 257 means everything. One would only be for TCP, seven would only be for UDP and you can do much more, but I'm not going into detail here. The next thing we have is the uh, QoS param set type, which means quality of service and uh, seven means active. Um, everything else instead of seven would mean it's disabled. Seven means it's active. A max rate sustained that comes straight out of our database uh, is the maximum transfer speed in uh, bits per second. And um, the next part is max traffic burst. We uh, didn't, we did comment that out because we uh, also use this out of our database and multiply it by this number. Uh, this is how much data can be sent in one burst. And uh, for the burst, we use this calculation, the current max upstream rate helper uh, multiplied by 0 0.1875. Um, this is, imagine starting a download and at the start of the download, you will have a bit more download rate than you actually get. If you ever start a download, you should have seen this before. And this is the um, calculation for that. Next, we have a DS service flow, which means downstream service flow. And here we have basically uh, the same um, parameters. Um, like in the upstream service flow, uh, DS service flow is the reference number. And the QoS param set type is 7 for active, of course. And the max rate sustained comes out of our database. 
Then we have the modem capabilities. These are optional. So the first part I showed was mandatory, but the uh, modem cap capabilities, for example, concatenation support enabled for concatenation of packages and the IGMP support all gets also activated. And the IGMP is the protocol for organizing multicast groups. IGMP itself means Internet Group Management Protocol. Then we also enable the global privacy. Um, this is the baseline privacy, which is mandatory now. And that's basically how data is encrypted between cable modems and clients and other stuff. So then next we set the baseline privacy itself. There we have an op time, authentication timeout, which is the amount of time a cable modem waits for a response from a CMTS when negotiating for a KEK for the first time. We also have a re -aut timeout. This is um, the wait amount for a response for renewing a KEK. We also have an authentic authentication grace time which is the grace period for reauthorization in seconds. So that is 600 seconds, about 10 minutes. Then we have an upper timeout, which is the amount of time a cable modem will wait for negotiating for a TEK for the first time. We also have a rec key timeout, which is the wait amount for a response for renewing a TEK, like the re timeout was for a KEK. Then we have the TEK grace time, which is the wait amount for a response for renewing a TEK. We have the TEK grace time. This is the grace period for reauthorization in seconds. Here it's 1,800 seconds. That's, that's pretty much. Then we have an order check timeout. This is when the negotiation failed. Um, the time a cable modem has to wait until it can retry this one. And we have an SA map wait timeout. This is the uh, retransmission interval in seconds for an SA map. And an SA map re max retries how often the SA map can be re requested again. And SA map is the requests or SA map requests are sent from the uh, cable modem to a CMTS for requesting the mapping of a particular downstream traffic flows to a BPA plus SA. And SA means a security association, and it's a set of security information which a CMTS and the cable modems share to support secure communications over the cable network. And for the next part of our video, we scroll a little bit down to the SNMP MIP object. I'm happy that I can even pronounce this one correctly. And here you can see the name for the SNMP MIP object comes right out of our database. And SNMP MIP object is basically an information collection. MIP means management information base and SNMP means symbol network management protocol. I'm now going quickly over the next few lines of our configuration. Uh, we chose this style that we have all uh, four lines with the same command next to each other and then the next ones and the next ones and the next ones. You can also change that style if you like and put all 10s right below each other, then all 20s, then all 30s, then all 40s. We just um, give some IP addresses, then some net masks, then uh, what it's called, it's the uh, community name for SS, then if it can read or write, and then later on some firewall rules for layer two and layer three. If you want to go deeper into this and know what each lines mean, you can Google for RFC 4639 and find out more about it. So now we assume that this is our whole configuration file because most modems only use the uh, CM base. So there is nothing else to add. And uh, NMS prime at compilation time adds this around the whole configuration. So it starts with main and it ends with a curly bracket. And that's it. That's our whole configuration file. In the next part of the video, I'm going to show you the Doxus tool, which helps you and lets you create Doxus files yourselves from these configuration files I showed you.
So we head over to GitHub. It's located right here in our lager slash docs. And then you can see the docs utility and how to install it. So that's what we're going to do now. For this, I've already prepared my terminal right here. And now I'm going to copy and paste all the commands from the uh, GitHub page right into the terminal. But first, let's do it to root. And we use this command. Yes, we want to install it. OK, so now it's installed. And we use the git clone command. Um, better switching to a folder now. We call it mkdr test, and I switch into test, and then um, making a git clone, and then use cd docs and the autogen file, and then we configure it. And then we type in make and then make install which is basically optional but i'm going to do it and then it's done it's installed now in the last part of the video i'm going to show how to use the docs utility for creating a docs file for an RS modem because this was requested we don't need to copy the cm base and then the errors and then everything else we can straight up head over to modems and then we use some of the existing Ares modems, for example, this one. And click on Analyzes in the upper left. And then you will see on the right side the uh, config file. If it's not pre-opened, you can click config file and then it gets opened. And then we can copy the complete configuration which NMS Prime has built us. And we are going to make a new file in my test folder. I call this one errors. And we copy that in. And then we use the terminal and are already in, an, in the test folder. And because I don't know how to use the docs utility because I pre-installed it right now, I click docs and the doxes and you can see the available comments uh, for example doxes minus e then the modem config file a key file and an output file the key fi file needs to be there but it can be empty if you insert a secret password then this will be used for the interaction between cable modems and uh, cmts so I'm going to create an empty file. I call this uh, no secret because it will have nothing in it like this. It's an empty text file, as you can see. And then I'm using the command doxes minus e errors.txt no secret because that's the name of the file and uh, then errors dot out or maybe errors dot config and then it has created a config file for an errors cable modem this can be decrypted by using docs minus d and then errors dot config and then we see the whole configuration i'm doing it again Bam, that's it. And this is how to use the Doxus utility. Something that really needs to be said is that when you install the Doxus utility for the first time, you will also install NetSMMP or whatever it's called for your distribution or operating system. Because of that, you will have some MIP files located in user share SNMP MIPs, but these won't be enough to compile the configuration files for all modems out there. As for the errors, you will have to look them up in Google and download them for yourself if you want to try this out. 
And that's it for this video. I really hope it helped a bit understanding the basic configuration. We also made the first configuration which I showed in this video public. If you want to reread it, you can head over to our documentation. The link is in the video description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to stay informed about NMS Prime, subscribe to our channel. And if you want, subscribe to our newsletter too at nmsprime.com. And as always, thanks for watching.